Hey, I'm Jimmy, and this is Philosophy for Everyday Life. So, I just finished four videos on Stoicism, which, if you haven't seen, you can find now in my Stoicism playlist. I mentioned in the most recent Stoicism video that I'd like to talk next about what some people call the Law of Attraction. My sense is that this idea of the Law of Attraction is another philosophical idea that a lot of people find attractive these days, although I think there are many others who are deeply skeptical of it. Because it seems to be receiving a certain amount of attention, I thought it might be interesting to compare the Law of Attraction with Stoicism. So in this video, I will first introduce the idea of the Law of Attraction, second, explain why it is different from Stoicism, and third, argue that Stoicism and the Law of Attraction are based on two different ideas about the nature of reality. So first, what is the Law of Attraction? In some ways, the Law of Attraction is hard to pin down because different authors advocate different versions of it. Some relatively mainstream self-help authors like Stephen Covey and Brian Tracy articulate a version of the Law of Attraction which is hard to disagree with. Others, such as Napoleon Hill and James Allen, have a somewhat more speculative understanding of the Law of Attraction. A third group of authors, such as Esther Hicks, takes the Law of Attraction even further in what could be called a mystical direction. In order to understand these different versions of the Law of Attraction, I think the best thing we can do is to trace its religious and philosophical roots. That will help us to see how the idea has developed over time and branched into several distinct but related positions. This history will take us through the thought and writings of the 18th century Lutheran pastor and mystic Emanuel Swedenborg, the English pastor George Mueller, who ran orphanages in the early 19th century, relying only on prayer without raising money, the American transcendentalist Ralph Waldo Emerson, and 20th century authors such as Napoleon Hill and Norman Vincent Peale, the author of Donald Trump's favorite book, The Power of Positive Thinking. I'll take a look at that history in coming videos. For now, I just want to get the basic idea of the Law of Attraction on the table. Author Brian Tracy defines the Law of Attraction like this. He says, it is the idea that you always attract into your life the people, ideas, and resources in harmony with your dominant thoughts. While Brian Tracy emphasizes the importance of thoughts, Esther Hicks emphasizes the importance of emotions. Hicks writes, whatever is happening to you is a perfect vibrational match to the current vibration of your being, and the emotions that are present within you indicate that vibrational state of being. It seems that for Hicks, it is emotions which lie beneath thoughts. She puts it like this, as you are choosing your thoughts, your emotions are guiding you. As we cultivate positive emotions, thoughts, or both, authors like Tracy and Hicks argue that our external circumstances will change accordingly. My second point is that even though both the Law of Attraction and Stoicism are somewhat popular, at least in certain corners of YouTube, and even though the same people sometimes advocate both ideas, it seems to me that Stoicism and the Law of Attraction are contrary positions. Stoicism tells us that we should be prepared for the worst possible thing to happen at any given time, and that we should be detached from material possessions, from our circumstances, and in general from our desires. Only by becoming detached in this way can we achieve the interior freedom that Stoicism prizes. Some advocates of the Law of Attraction, on the other hand, tell us that we should do the exact opposite. Instead of preparing for the worst, we should expect the best. Instead of detaching ourselves from desires for new possessions or better circumstances, proponents of the Law of Attraction say we should intensify our desires and expect that as our desire grows, non-material forces will in some way conspire to fulfill those desires. Stoicism and the Law of Attraction provide two different ways of approaching what I've been calling everyday philosophy. And if you'd like to get a better sense of that idea, check out my first video on how to be an everyday philosopher. Stoicism tells us to minimize our desires, the Law of Attraction tells us to intensify our desires. My third point is that the disagreement between Stoicism and the Law of Attraction about how we should approach our desires is tied to a more fundamental disagreement. Stoicism and the Law of Attraction don't just tell us to do different things with our desires. They actually have fundamentally different conceptions about the nature of the world. Stoicism is a materialist philosophy. 
It holds that everything which exists necessarily exists in some material form. Even the soul, the Stoics believed, is some sort of material substance. God is not an immaterial being who transcends the universe. Instead, God is a type of material substance which pervades the universe, just as the human soul is a material substance which pervades the human body. Now, my preliminary hunch is that the law of attraction has to hold a non-materialist view of the world. And that means that Stoicism and the law of attraction have very different ideas about the kind of place that the world is. It doesn't really matter what we call it, but let's say this non-materialist picture of the world is idealism. The law of attraction, as I understand it at this point, has to presuppose that matter is not the most fundamental thing in the universe. It has to presuppose that ideas, or thoughts, or perhaps emotions are the most fundamental thing. This means that the law of attraction presupposes some kind of philosophical idealism. In ancient philosophy, idealism was connected with Plato and his school of philosophy, which held against the Stoics that the most fundamental truths and realities are non-material. These fundamental realities are not material substances or bodies. They are pure ideas. The material world, according to Plato and his followers, is only a dim reflection of this higher or more fundamental intellectual reality. Plato called it the realm of the forms. Aristotle, who was himself a student of Plato, criticized Plato's notion of the forms, but he was not a materialist like the Stoics. We might think of Aristotle as holding a middle position between Plato's idealism and the materialism of the Stoics. Idealism has had a very long and influential history. One finds it again in early modern philosophers such as George Berkeley, who held that all material things exist only because they are constantly being thought in the mind of God, and Immanuel Kant, who held that space, time, and the laws of the physical world are only the form in which human beings experience the world but not substantive aspects of a real world that can be known by human reason. I've explained very briefly what I mean by the word idealism, which is that non-material ideas are the most fundamental reality, even more real and even more fundamental than the physical material universe. Now let's think about some of the titles of influential books that advocate the law of attraction. There are James Allen's As a Man Thinketh, Napoleon Hill's Think and Grow Rich, Norman Vincent Peale's The Power of Positive Thinking, and Brian Tracy's Change Your Thinking, Change Your Life. Each of these authors advocates something to the effect that matter is not the most powerful or fundamental reality. It is not material substances, but intellectual substances, minds or thoughts, which determine reality. This is so much the case, these authors claim, that one can actually change physical reality by changing one's thoughts. Many of them say something to the effect that the material world is only a manifestation or crystallization of thought. It's still unclear to me how far they think this idea should be taken. Are these authors just using rhetorical flourishes to make the point that before we implement some plan, for example, we first have to think of it? Or are they saying something more to the effect that physical reality itself is a manifestation of thought, or in some way depends on thought? That's a question I hope to answer for myself over the course of this series. At the moment, it is hard for me to avoid the conclusion that these authors are committed to some kind of philosophical idealism, which would mean that reality itself depends on thought in some fundamental way. So the difference between Stoicism and the Law of Attraction isn't just a difference between a more pessimistic and a more optimistic approach to the world. There is a more fundamental difference, which has to do with how we think about the nature of reality. Is reality only material? Are physical bodies or material substances all that exists? Or is there a deeper non-material reality of which the physical world is only an impermanent reflection? How we answer these kinds of questions can affect how we approach more practical matters. It might turn out that if you're an optimist, some kind of idealism will be attractive to you, and that if you are a pessimist, you might find that materialism makes intuitive sense. So those are my thoughts for now. In my next video or two, I'd like to take a look at some of the religious and philosophical history of the law of attraction. After that, I'll try to offer a more informed critical evaluation. So what do you think? Are there other differences or similarities between Stoicism and the law of attraction? 
I'd love to know. If you'd like to continue the conversation, leave a comment below, subscribe to my channel, and like this video. Until next time, carpe diem. Thank you.